We are live. And we're, we're live to a very special episode of the Rocket Review live stream. It's Tuesday Booze Day. And we are here. We are very, very excited to welcome the one, the only, well, I guess there's two of you. So the two, the only, <laughs> Mark and Lisa Townsend of Still in Canada and the Silver Fox Distillery. Welcome. Uh, I, she's, she's hiding that way. Oh, oh sorry. Oh. That way. <laughs> I, can, I can make this wider so we can hopefully see. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see if she mixes in. We'll see, okay. If she comes on, we'll, we'll worry about that. Are you coming in behind me? Yes, she is. Oh, very good. I think she's going to pop in and out. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs> um, so real quick, I'm going to say hi to everybody who's in our chat. We got Mark Goings on. We got Wheels, Andrew Spirell, John Gunsel. Good to see you, John. Arthur Lopez is in. All the usual suspects. Uh, yeah, good to see everybody. How are hey, doing? Mark JG's there. Yeah, that's 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 the man, Mark Goings on. He uh, he and I shared a very very awkward Uber ride down in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh oh, hold on a sec. Now Mark just said, "Bring the Dalek in." Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It's there. I can't bring them in, but there's one. There's two. And up is three. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, the TARDIS in the corner. And the TARDIS in the corner, yeah. And the car, Bessie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, have you never seen Bessie? No, I think I think you did show it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we built that two years ago. You are a man of many talents. Well, we need one more winner, and then it'll be on the road. It's already licensed. We just have to finish the drive line and the electrical. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, you can make the screen wider. No, that's okay. okay. Yeah, I'll make I'll make it I'll make it wider right quick. There. We there go. we go. Perfect. I'm wearing my work. okay. <laughs> so um i did want to congratulate you guys i missed your your thousand uh subscriber live stream because i was you were invited. sorry you're breaking up a little bit i said you uh -oh. were invited i know i uh -oh. know but see i was like i'm gonna get off at nine which is nine central time which is 10 o'clock your time i'm assuming yep yep, yep. we were done at 10 so yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunately, I I missed that one. That's well, fine. We're here now. We're here now. Yeah. Although I, I feel yes, congratulations. Thank you. It's it's been it's been a fun road. Uh, no doubt about it. We've had a lot of fun. Uh, I, I you know what? It's an amazing amount of learning we've had to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said on the show that. I never done any video editing. I've never done anything like that. And we didn't have the equipment to do it. So the first year while we were doing our YouTube channel, everything was done on the iPhone. So all the filming, all the editing, all the music, it was all iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's impressive that you were able to do that with, with just the iPhone. Well, if you saw the old videos, yeah, you'd see it. <laughs> Our old videos, all our, all our old videos were even worse, and we actually had editing software. So, <laughs> um, but maybe even more exciting though, you guys are officially opened. Silver Fox Distillery is officially opened. Not yet. No. No. Wait, we're just waiting for one more, or just for the retail store. We can sell it El Cibio. Okay. Okay. We can sell, yeah. We can sell that our uh, our liquor uh, control board distributing center. Uh, we just can't sell to anyone who walks through our front door. So it's oh, our retail okay. license that we're still sitting on. Yeah. We're all approved. It's all done. We just need that piece of paper in our hands. Got it. Okay. And so nothing in the government moves fast. You, and then once you have it, you're good to go. Yes. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh man. That, yeah. Oh, that has to be hard to wait for that. It is. Well, it, it, it is it is hard, and you know we we um, I, I do get a little grumbly about it at time to time. Uh, just I, I'd like to it for it to have moved faster, but we knew going into this that when we got our place in January, it was going to be anywhere from eight months to twenty four. So 
we're just near the end of 12 so you know i think we're doing all right yeah that's well within the margin yeah for sure um also i do need to bring your attention to a joke john gunsel made in the chat because I, I i need to bring this up what does a dalek drink distillate yeah. <laughs> that's all right i had to do now we use the daleks a lot and i don't know if you the story know the story behind them we use them to go to comic cons and that and we raise money for sick children's hospitals so you know uh, to date we're around two hundred thousand dollars for sick kids over the last seven years and we do make a wish and everything else like that but on occasion, there has been times where the one Dalek has been going down the halls inside a holiday inn with the uh, mutant somewhat inebriated. And all you can hear is the Dalek going, inebriate, inebriate. <laughs> <laughs> Heard that one. Oh, that's adorable. Well, that's really impressive. That's a bunch of money for a really good cause. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, there's a group, uh, Doctor Who Society of Canada, Canadian Dalek Empire. Um, we all work together towards a goal and, uh, yeah, we do what we can for the kids. It's, you know, it's, it became a passion, um, far more than a hobby. Uh, I ended up with nine Daleks. I've got one Dalek that is 14 feet tall. Uh, <laughs> he's taller than the TARDIS is. <laughs> oh man. Doesn't move though. So, okay. I did just to speak so just because, uh, uh, let it pull out a sec. Just okay. because this is rock gut review, yeah, we can't drink any of our. Well, we are going to drink some of our own stuff later, but we thought we would pay tribute. And I looked into our liquor cabinet for three of the worst things I could find. Oh. <laughs> there wasn't a Canadian Mist there. It's hmm. not the worst. It's Although the Canadian worst. Mist probably would have been a step up. Oh, fun. I haven't, I've never had that one. When you come up, I will have lots for you because I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people that love it. A lot of people love it. It's, it's the best selling uh, um, moonshine in the States. Yeah. So, is it really? I, yeah, I've never even heard of it, honestly. Maybe uh, I'll a little moonshine. I'll, I, I was drinking some Driftless Glen rye whiskey. But if you're going to drink some moonshine, I'll break out some moonshine too. I'll set so this. you haven't watched Moonshiners, the TV show then? Oh, that's where it's from? That is yeah. where it's from, yeah. yes. Got it. Yeah, no. Isn't that kind of like that fake thing where they pretend that they're pretend they're illicit distillers and it's kind of like a reality show? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And uh, you know what? Uh, I'm on a lot of the forums. And it's really quite surprising how many people uh, watch the show as gospel. And I'm looking at, well, if you do that, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if, if you do that, you're not going to have any conversion of starches. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of lot of information rather left out. Sure. It is entertaining, though. Yeah. Sure. And that's what they're making. They're making a, an, an entertainment show. They're not making a how-to distill show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also speaking of moonshine, now if I understand correctly, you've got a moonshine in the works right now, or, or a, a white lightning. Yes, we do. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so that's um, you know, we just uh, we just went through the weekend where we had um five different versions and uh, of our mix, and we allowed people to test. And it was the people that decided which one we're actually going to put in a bottle permanently. Very cool. Very cool. So what did, what did they choose? What did, what did they settle on? I'm sorry I missed that. What did, what did they choose? What, what's the, uh, what, what are the details? Uh, our, our moonshine is... It's going to be dying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going... Um, our moonshine is a mixture of three grains. So... It's not like your regular moonshine, which would be a corn and sugar and, and you know, uh, fermented out and done. Ours is actually a blend of three grains. So I, I give it a Canadian whiskey twist. Uh, so we have uh, corn, oats, and wheat, and we run and ferment each one separately and then blend it at the end. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, so, so, yeah very much exactly like you would if you were aging it Canadian whiskey style. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's it's the Canadian twist, in my opinion, you know, with the fermenting each separately. And it is the silver fox that uh, is learned as craft and blends a higher quality product. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm very much a whiskey drinker, scotch drinker as well. And I enjoy the complexity that comes with the spirit. I enjoy, much like you on, on your doing your reviews, you're picking out those notes, you're looking for those flavors. And typically in the moonshine, there is none of that. It's a one shot, shoot it, you're done. Whereas with ours, this complexity, there's uh, your, your first sip is different from your second. As it's sitting in your mouth, it evolves and it changes. So very much like a, a very young whiskey. Sure. So how do you, if, if, you know, a lot of, with whiskey, a lot of flavors coming from wood and that aging process. How do you how do you make a moonshine? What's the process for making a moonshine that doesn't just taste like straight corn funk? Uh, well, once again, see, our in my opinion, a moonshine is a it's a mash that is uh, sugar as well as a grain. Now, for most, and you'll see it on the TV show Moonshiners, where they they pour in all that sugar and then they throw some corn in and then they just cook it and ferment it. Mm -hmm. Well, they haven't actually gotten anything other than some simple flavors out of the corn. Uh, what we do is we'll, we'll, if we're doing the corn mash, and actually I have an oat sitting in the, uh, in the mash tun right now. But when we're doing the corn, we'll take it up to uh, a certain temperature, a higher temperature, where it's already pre-gelatinized because we're using flake corn. But we're taking it up and we're using an amylase, which is the, uh, what converts the starches to sugar. So we're actually getting uh, everything out of the corn to make a spirit. So we really don't need the sugar, uh, although we do, uh, instead of doubling up on the corn, we, do, we cut it half corn, half sugar, and we convert the corn and use that in our calculations. So it gives you far more body and far more flavor than what you get if you just tried to flavor with it. Okay, so there is, but there is some sugar in the, in the mash? Uh, no, no sugar. Okay. Hold on a sec. Two fans just turned on. I can't hear a thing. Oh, okay. Lisa's going Lisa's to entertain you for a sec. Okay. No, can you grab my headset back there on the back room, please? Yeah, it's uh, kind of chilly up here, and the fans are running with the heaters today, so. Oh, sure. Yeah. How, how cold is it up there? Because we're, we're, we're actually kind of nice. We're sitting around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Not too bad. Yeah, right it's uh, what minus minus six right now, minus five. Okay, yeah, yeah, a little colder, a little colder for sure. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting on some headsets. Yeah, but then we can't hear them. Can we? Uh, no, you can't. But at least I'll be able to understand. I did forget to ask everyone in the uh, in the chat what they're drinking. Wow, that's a whole lot better. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're not quite as boomy either. Yeah. Uh, so everyone in the chat, sound off if you can hear me. Uh, tell us what you're drinking. Um, but yeah, okay. So you're actually, I mean, you're you're not just doing corn sh or uh, uh, sugar shine. You're doing like a, a corn shine moonshine. Well, uh, yeah, we're white, we're like a white whiskey, but you you can't call it white whiskey because you're in Canada. Uh, well, we, we could call it White Dog if it didn't have any sugar in it. And so uh, we do have, last week I ran the, um, the, uh, the Weller's Antique 12 and the Eagle Rare. And they're just a straight green run. So what comes off there is called a White Dog. Okay. And we could sell that as it is. Uh, we're not going to call it Weller's or you know any of that. Yeah. But what we're looking for is we already have our... Uh, scotch style ready for the barrel so we know what we're doing there we just we have to build a, a peat smoking machine so we're going to malt our own grains and we're going to use ontario peat to uh to smoke and get the grains with a canadian style and flavor uh but we wanted a bourbon style as well so that we're barreling uh, side by side and Two of my favorites, uh, lower cost, is the Weller's Antique uh, 107 and the Eagle Rare. Now, I have the mash bill, and I, in the last previous couple of episodes, you saw me make it and show how it's all done and everything else. But there's no way I'm going to make the same product as what you can buy on the shelf, and I don't want to. 
Uh, you know, if, if <laughs> why not just buy it off the shelf? Right. So, yeah, for us, it's uh, our yeast is different. Uh, how we're going to age it's different. And, you know, right now, I uh, threw the, uh, the Eagle Rare on wood for four days just to see what the profile is going to be like coming on the barrel. And, yeah, we're really, really happy with it. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I mean, and obviously your your stills are going to be completely different shape than the guys down at Buffalo Trace. I mean, oh. different size, different in shape, different in everything else. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. And you know what? And when, once it's off the still, I'd say 75 to 80 percent of the flavor is going to be from the barrel, from where it's sitting in the warehouse. You know, and you know yourself, one barrel side by side tastes different. So. Right. You know, and we don't have uh, 50,000 barrels to blend from, so we're doing single cask release. <laughs> sure, absolutely, absolutely. Which, I mean, is fun in and of itself. I mean, and especially as a small a small distiller getting started, you can't really, yeah, you're never going to be able to blend a product that's going to be exactly consistent. Um, Arthur Lopez is on the Balcones Sproke, which I love. The Juntos? I don't think I got to try the Juntos, unfortunately. And I missed it when we were down in Texas, and that was supposed to be amazing. Um, but yeah, and I was actually wondering about that. So now, obviously, Canada, to call it whiskey, got to age three years. Three um, years plus a day. Yep. Are you are you planning to use uh, uh, new oak, used oak? What's what are you looking at for your for your whiskeys? Mixture of both. Uh, yeah, actually, we're. we're, we're... I, as you can tell from my channel, I love to experiment. We love to try new things and, and develop the craft uh, whichever way we can. So right now on the floor, I've got a, uh, an X brandy cask or uh, barrel. I've got a, uh, a French oak uh, sitting here. I have two sherry casks on order uh, coming up from the U.S. Uh, to my, the guy who does all the, uh, the reworking on the cask. And we're going to use an Oloroso cask as well. Oh, very cool. So, and then that, yeah, then the, the standard, uh, you know, uh, the Texas, uh, or not Texas, the, the Kentucky Trail uh, distilleries, we can get a lot of those barrels. Uh, they're easy. Mm, sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and also, I did want to say, chat, if you have any questions for the Townsends, please throw them in and I'll read them off uh, from the chat. Like, this is not just a me kind of show. This is a this is an open Q&A. Um, so, uh, bottle two. So we went down to a, a distillery that's in Canada, it's down in London, and he had this, uh, and he was just bottling it. And we thought, well, this is kind of interesting. Let's have a look at this, and we'll give it a try. And it wasn't bad. Uh, it doesn't, well, it still makes another rock up, but yeah, no, it wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, but maybe yeah. it wasn't the best either. Uh, I asked the guy, I said, uh, it, it was a new distillery taken over for someone else. I said, uh, you know, it's not that bad. I said, I, I had a couple of suggestions. And he says, oh, good, because we have no idea how to make it. <laughs> oh, no. The previous master distiller had left the company and took his recipe book that was in his head. Oh, no. So I had no idea. They just oh, ran, ran off what they had and kept on going. At that point, you might want to do a repackaging or a relabeling or something. <laughs> well, they just had what was on the shelf. He said to me, he looked at me, he says, well, it's it's a batch number one, bottle number 97. And he said, uh, enjoy it because you'll never get it again. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> so I, I was wondering, um, you know, well, I got a bunch of questions, but... One of the questions that was on my mind is when you're you're making your you're getting your new make going, right? Yep. Uh, are you doing your do are you doing your fermentation as well as your distilling? You're doing your fermentation on site. You want to go for a quick walk? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you're on battery now. We're gonna go for a little walk. Now you're on the laptop, not an iPhone, so it's gonna be a little harder to play with. Well, we we appreciate putting you putting the effort in. And also, uh, Floyd just popped in. I'm sorry. Floyd Floydian just popped in. I'm saying hi to Floyd. Hi Floyd. Oh, okay. Good to see you, buddy. All right. So 
uh, heaters on in here, so I'll try to shut that down, although I don't think I'll shut off that soon. So there is my six fermenters. Ooh. See those? So they're 1,300 liters each. And you can see the lid open on that one. I just emptied that into still number two, and I'm refilling it right now from the mash tun. So it was a corn shine that's gone in still two, and the mash tun. And that's it there. So yeah, let's not drop the laptop inside. <laughs> that would be bad. So there's the oats mixing. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And then in still two, hopefully you can see through the... Yeah, you can see that's loaded with match. Oh, look at that. So and I'll run that off in the morning. Little baby whiskey waiting to be born. <laughs> and we have our totes here, so we keep the one totes for uh, the sta their stainless totes, and the one is for the oats, the other one's for the corn, and then we have a separate one for the wheat. Okay, very cool. And that's where you want this this spot right here. Is that your parrot? That's the parrot. That's the ear insert mouth here. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were actually going to have a sleepover with cast strength, and we were making jokes that we we're going to put Brad on the floor right underneath there as I was running. <laughs> just let it just let it run into his mouth. Yep. <laughs> so now I see I see you've got what looks like two pot stills and then a set of columns there. Correct. So we have we're, we're a little bit different. Uh, we have the, the two 1300 liter pot stills and we did that so we could uh, experiment even further. So we could load one with a brandy, the other one with a grain, and then mix them all together up here in the column. Oh. And same when, when we decide to do a, a corn and an oat or a corn and a wheat, we can mix it in the column. That gives us a whole different flavor than if I just did them separately. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it, it allows for sure some huge experimentation down the road. Yeah. Not at, not the beginning, but down the road, we're going to be playing a lot. Oh, that's so cool. I've never heard of someone like do it. I don't know if that's a common thing, but I've, I haven't heard of someone doing it quite like that. Where you're There's only one other in Canada. Sorry? There's only one other distillery in Canada that does it. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So then we have our, our copper whiskey tower. So even our moonshine goes through this whiskey tower. Okay. So it refines it a little bit. You don't end up with all those heavy oils. Creates a drier spirit. Some people say it strips out flavor. It doesn't do that. It creates a drier spirit, so it's not as oily. And then we have the, the two vodka towers, and then that's the gym basket, and then the condenser. Wow. Okay, so you you got one condenser that runs from off of e those fills all run to that one condenser. Yes. So we can. I designed the system. And in that, we set it up so that we can uh, go right from the pot, so from either still right to the condenser, that's the pot still, or go through any individual plate we wanted to. So we can add one plate, we can add 20 plates or 25 plates. Oh, that's so cool. And then those catch totes you saw like, right there, that's what we're using them for right now. And they have mixer motors on them so we can make like cures and everything. But they're also for future use. Um, Whenever I did rums, I always, it always tasted better if I did something called a double thumper system. So that's where the liquid comes from the still into a big pot, yeah. out of that pot into another pot, and then into the condenser. And that's what those two uh, units are going to be for down the road. They're going to be double thumpers. Very cool. So they'll be part of the still. Okay. So right now your moonshine is being run through the pot still and then through the whiskey column right now. Right, right. So it comes out of still right now. Right, so it comes out of the uh, the pot still there, mm -hmm. and it runs through the four plates here in the whiskey column, and then right over to the condenser. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and then we have the bottling center there. So there's where we bottle oh. our labeler and our vacuum sealer and everything. Cool. And then, of course, we have our own laboratory, which it's messy. It's not fully set up yet, but we have some little treats in here, too. So we have another still. Nope, oh, there we go. 
that's a little 100 liter Bain Marine, so I can run it off steam or there's two electric elements in there I can run it on. Uh, that's for testing out um, different styles of mashes and, and running that. And we can run that sucker right to a vodka. Uh, and then we have this, this one. Now, you laugh at this. Oh, look but, at that. Okay, so that's a little glass beaker set. And what we do, this is the Weiss little still. She runs, uh, she throws vodkas into here and she does all her botanicals into here so that we know what type of gins we want. Oh, very so cool. That way we're only doing a two liter run and uh, she uh, comes out, we can pretty much figure out the flavor. And although we don't do a direct scale up, we know roughly what we want to put in for uh, botanicals. Sure, sure. So I know this is mainly a whiskey show, but talk to us about that gin real quick. That's I'm interested to hear what you're doing there. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry. Keep going with the tour. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to have a mess up. All right, so. What? They want to know about gin. Yeah, tell us about the gin. I haven't done anything with the gin yet. <laughs> you're just saying you're experimenting. I am, but I'm looking, I'm trying to do more of a... I'm still experimenting. I want to do kind of like a lavender type gin. Okay. So sort of like on a floral one. So that's the one I'm working towards with some mixes and. Well, yeah. you've got quite a few in your catalog here. Well, at. I do, but I'm still working on them. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe we're not quite quite ready to uh, reveal quite yet. Yeah, I'm still doing the experimenting. So I'm more of a newbie than he is. Like, like he's been doing this for a while. I'm pretty new to it. So I've got a huge learning curve, but gin is my passion to try to figure out, you know, different recipes and that for that. But I've got a lot of ideas. Okay. That's really yeah. Cool. But I want some to be a surprise. <laughs> for sure. Um, speaking of which, I was wondering how... You say Mark's been doing this a while. How did you guys decide to just start this distillery anyway? I feel like that's that's a question I should have asked at the beginning. How did we decide? Well, we we're kind of all sitting around a campfire one day. <laughs> yeah, we were. Uh, there's a another couple here, um, Emmy and Carl, and the four of us were all sitting around a campfire, a Christmas Eve actually. Uh, what two two years ago and I know we had talked about it and they they started talking about it when we were sitting around this campfire and going you know what we can do this we can do this and Mark had a bunch of ideas I had ideas Carl and Emmy had ideas yeah so yeah so and it just went from there it just blossomed from there yeah cool and I was, oh, I was wondering. Oh. I can't hear him. <laughs> so, um, question. Uh, we do have a question from Mike for Mark, real quick. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get the headphone back on. There you go. You know, we called the place Silver Fox because uh, old as shit didn't go on the window. <laughs> old as dirt. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, in that note, uh, uh, the hearing doesn't get too good. Uh, you, you're pretty spry. You're pretty spry. Yeah. You don't seem, you don't seem, seem too silver. Yeah, I'm not going to take you in a boxing match, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Mike was asking, uh, were you tempted to make any of the equipment look like K9 or a Dalek? <laughs> not the equipment i'm distilling from but wait until you see my uh, draft keg <laughs> <laughs> you you pull the plunger and you get the beer out of the gun <laughs> oh that's fun oh that's a lot of fun I like that a lot. Oh. so okay you you've got a moonshine right now You've got some whiskeys in the in the making. Yeah, you're also set up to do gin and vodka. Have you and your work? You're experimenting with the gin right now. But, right, Lisa. You know we have a uh, as Lisa said, we have uh, quite a few that we want to do. Uh, we're going to go into two styles. One's going to be a floral, and 
there's several different florals. I, I like a rose gin, Lisa wants to do the lavender, and there's a hibiscus and a few others. In fact, we have hibiscus plants growing in here, and she keeps plucking the flowers out of them. Uh, <laughs> And when we when we first got this place, as soon as it warmed up outside, we planted all the junipers. So we had the blueberry junipers growing all the way down the side of the road, oh, wow. and we actually planted. And it, it's almost extinct up here. Is we planted uh, ten pawpaw trees. Huh. So I don't know if you've ever had a pawpaw. I've not. It is a na native North American fruit. It it uh, it was in Canada. It's pretty much extinct. There's only one area that really had it. Uh, they're just starting to come back now. Uh, they're not really a commercially viable fruit because they they're ripe for three days and then they're garbage. Oh. So, <laughs> but for that three days, they are the flavors a mix between a mango and a pineapple. Oh, yeah, That's really cool. So one chomp and you're getting both of that first flavors in your mouth. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's pretty so, fantastic. I like yeah. it. So that's, so that's probably going in the gym at some point. That's pretty cool. No, I mean, well, I mean, she may want it for the gym, but I want it for my liqueurs. Oh, there you go. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I enjoy liqueurs and I enjoy making them. Uh, there's, there's so much... Uh, uh, varieties you can do and it's it's endless so I, we have some and that's one of the neat things about having a distillery in canada is uh we're not we we want to be well known for our whiskeys but yeah <laughs> when you have to sit on them for three years you do other stuff so uh vodka definitely we have our labels for that that's coming out and we have a distribution center here uh lcbo a liquor board liquor control board of ontario so we will be selling our, some of our products to them. Uh, we're looking at three of our SKUs going to them. But we have to be careful because uh, it's a large corporation that you have to be readily available for them. So mm -hmm. if they call you up and they say, we're picking up 8,000 bottles in two days, it better be ready. You can't say no. Right. Uh, and on that note, you better have a backup for when they call for the same order in two weeks' time. <laughs> So yeah, and so we figure we can easily support three SKUs, so three different products, and we're looking at our, our Moonshine, so our White Lightning, our Vodka, which is Sterling Vodka, and we're looking at our Deadly Spirits Coffee Liqueur. Okay. So it's it's really a cool coffee liqueur, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but the nice thing is, and huh, I don't know if that's, the girls hid the label back here. We have what we call laboratory releases. Hold on a second. Okay. I want to say, well, he's getting ready. I saw Benjamin Eves pop into the chat. Hello, Benjamin. Good to see you as always. Thank you for dropping by. Yeah, so much for being so well prepared, eh? <laughs> <laughs> We're so professional. So, first off, there's our label for our Italy Spirits Coffee Liqueur. Oh, look at that. Well, that's so, fun. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. And that, if you saw in the walkthrough, there's a reason why we have a coffin in here. <laughs> <laughs> So the one thing is, uh, we wanted to be, you know, my tastes are different than yours. You might like Canadian mist. I don't. <laughs> no one likes Canadian mist. <laughs> oh, well, maybe me, though. Eh. So because of that, I, I said from the very beginning, I don't have to like everything we make. I just have to be proud of it. That's all I need to be. So in that, anything we design, whether it's a limited release, like a limoncello or something, uh, it's going to stay here in the distillery. We'll have limited releases and seasonal releases of certain things. Oh, so yeah. we're going to stick our laboratory label on them. Oh, look at that. Fox Den Laboratory. Oh, that's cute. Okay, that way we can make whatever we want, throw it on the floor, and if it sells, then we'll make a good label for it and make it part of our uh, carry. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, that's a really fun idea. I like that. 
<laughs> so now you're making a vodka too. So the three products at the LCBO, coffee liqueur, vodka, and uh, what was the third one? The white lightning fox white lightning. Lightning. So are those available? When are those available? Uh, our viewers in Canada, if we have any. Uh, the one one should be ready, and I'm hoping it's the uh, the Fox Shine should be ready by midsummer. Okay. Okay, so there's the label you're going to be looking for. Not the Nog Shine. That's the Christmas release. <laughs> the Fox Shine. And then there's the, the Sterling Vodka. Okay. So tell me about the vodka, because I feel like a lot of craft distillers do especially american craft distillers do like you know they distill up to 95 percent they proof it down and then sell it and it all it all tastes kind of the same is there anything well, it, it, it's really supposed to uh you have to by definition have to distill above 95 percent okay because the intent is that vodka is supposed to be a neutral spirit it's supposed to strip all flavors out so above 95 percent 95 and above so theoretically, that should strip out all the flavors. Uh, the only issue is I can tell you exactly what's a corn, what's a barley, what's an oat, and what's a potato. I can tell you that instantly as soon as I open up a vodka. So you will never get rid of all the flavor. It, that's, that's impossible. So they're not only the flavor, but the body, the essence of the spirit. So uh, have you ever had a product called Crystal Skull? I've seen it. I haven't had it, no. Okay, so it's really a great promotional idea, but the vodka inside, once again, you're paying for the promotion, you're paying for the skull, run it through a Brita filter 10 times, and it's pretty good. But, <laughs> but it is a corn sugar wash, so it's, it's the same as one of my moonshines, and it's just distilled at high, and you can, you can taste it. Hmm. Sure. So... Yeah, so to me, it's, it's uh, you know, is, is it about that taste? No, because that's subtle enough. Uh, I do want something in there that will be recognizable, but will blend right out on any type of mixer. Uh, but I want a good mouthfeel. So I want it to sit on, coat on, oil the tongue, not be a burn, uh, just, you know, be a pleasant experience. Sure. And, and how, do you, how do you distill to get that? Like, I mean, not to get too much into your techniques, but is is there a particular way to distill that gives you that nice mouthfeel, that heavier essence of the spirit? Oh, yeah, it really depends on what you put in the mash. So uh, if you're doing, uh, you know, for us, we have some rice in there and we have a few other things. Uh, we're, we're experimenting with some uh, sweet potato as well, um, just to round it off a bit more. So it's the ingredients that will give you that mouthfeel. So it... it now that's that's the way we're approaching it. Mm -hmm. Some companies can actually, you know, once again, you have ninety-five percent. Uh, that's what's coming off. You're going to cut it down, but you can still add things to it. So some companies will add glycerin, and it's it's kind of a cheat. Uh, you know, I, I, I to me it's it's fine if if you're forward with it, and you know, if someone asks you, you tell them right off. Uh, and a lot of liqueurs do have it, and we have glycerin here for our liqueurs if we need to just bring in a thicker mouthfeel and that's what we're using it for yeah i didn't i had no idea that people were allowed to do that that's crazy to me yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on a sec i gotta unplug yeah now I can, hear. can you hear now i can hear him okay yeah, <laughs> yeah but the question is can we hear them <laughs> um, so yeah so now when you're doing obviously for your your mash for your uh, uh, your moonshine, because when I mean, down here in America, moonshine is kind of this term that just means any like it can be sugar shine, you can do corn mm. shine. Some people call it corn whiskey moonshine. It's all just labeling. Um, yep. But you're doing you're doing actually you're actually getting gelatinized grain, getting the starches to turn mm. to sugar, and then you've got some sugar shine as well. Um, well, no, no, no. Uh... The definitions vary from people to people. So, you know, when you say moonshine, you get some people that will say, well, it's an Ill illegal act done in the backwoods. You know, they, they pull the dead raccoon out of the mash and throw it in the still and away you go. Um, for our 
thoughts on it. It is a sugar wash with a grain additive. Uh, doesn't even have to have a grain. Uh, can be a straight sugar wash, although we will never do that. Uh, but for us, it's a grain with a sugar. Okay. A completely all grain, fresh off the still, we call a white dog. White dog. So that's that in, in our that's in our minds of how we explain it. So our moonshine is yes, it's converted grains. We we get every ounce of sugar out for conversion, and then we add sugar to it just to bring the specific gravity up, so that when we uh, you know when we do a 1300 liters, it's going to ferment down to about 10 percent. Now that's one thing we do look for is we look for between eight and 10 percent for our final alcohol content potential alcohol. Mm -hmm. You can go higher. You can go up. I mean, we've heard of guys doing 20, 21%, but in order to do that, you need a, uh, a, a high end mash, heavy nutrients, and you're stressing the yeast out so much that you're going to get off flavor. So there's no way around that. Sure. Um, you, you get that, that bitterness. It's just the, it's, it, it makes Canadian mist look like a charm. <laughs> so we never do that. We, we typically stay with the same rules as what we'd use in a whiskey. So our fermenters, once again, we're, we're not playing with five gallons. We're playing with 1,300 liters. And we can make a little uh, allowances. We don't have to get that much alcohol. We don't push our yeast. We have a specific yeast we use. Uh, we are designing one as well. Oh, very cool. And the intent is to have a nice flavor, no off fusel oils, none of that astringent uh, uh, stuff by a stretch yeast. So yeah, we throw sugar in, but we're definitely watching and we know where our gravities are. Sure. Well, and I guess my question was, you know, obviously the, the corn and the oats are really where you're, and the wheat is really where you're getting a lot of flavor. When you distill a sugar wash, though, does the sugar contribute any flavor whatsoever, or is that really just there just to generate alcohol? If you didn't have a grain, or uh, and yeah, if if you had a grain that you're not converting, then yes, you're going to be able to taste that sugar. And a straight sugar wash, you can definitely taste the sugar. Um, the once. Yeah, when when you're when you're converting the grain, then you're primarily getting that flavor of the grain, which it, it, it takes over and, and neutralizes the taste of the sugar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see some guys are running their right off the still, they're running their sugar wash through a bed of charcoal. And I can't say too much here. Kentucky does that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's it's getting rid of those harsh flavors, and that's uh, that's why you're running through charcoal. Right. Absolutely. I mean, much like much like vodka is filtered after distillation, um, or Jack Daniels or any any of that kind of thing. Um, so, how long is your fermentation? How long does your fermentation last? Um, for for I mean, any any of them, I guess. Depend okay. So what, once again, we're we're using we're not using high high speed high stress yeast. Mm -hmm. We're using a simple relaxed approach to it. So. Our, our uh, ferments are taking anywhere from seven to 10 days. You know, we've seen it come out in five or six, but yeah, seven or 10 days. Like right now, I've got two fermenters that are loaded that are sitting, and I'm sorry if I throw out specific gravity. Basically, when you're reading the, when we start, we measure, we throw in a hydrometer and we're measuring the gravity of the liquid. So, and we're starting about 1.080. So that's, and that's the ballpark that we aim for. And if you saw on, on the, any of my previous videos, I show you how to actually calculate a mash to work with that. So then we ferment it. And in about three days, it should be down to about 130, 1.030. And then uh, the two I have right now are sitting at, uh, well, once you get to one, that's when you throw it in the still and run it. Uh, but right now I'm sitting at 0 0.995. So I'm actually getting more than the yeast is actually working far better than it should. Okay. Okay. Which I want, I mean, that sounds like a good thing. Like, Oh, you're getting more alcohol. But yes. Really, you're, you're 
is that is that good or are you trying to get that consistent specific it's value? good if i'm getting it at that end of the scale because that's telling me that the yeast are still very healthy like i say once it gets to one basically your yeast is done as a rule sure. but when i start getting below into the nines 996 995 that's telling me that yeast is still healthy it's actually consuming more than what it should uh so it's 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 more alcohol than what we expect so we're quite happy with that oh very cool very cool now i see benjamin's asking if we're using open top fermenters no <laughs> no and if you saw on the tour we did earlier the fermenters are all closed up now i'm not using a bubbler so take that for what it is uh it's i do have a filter system on them so that they are atmospheric but there, the layer of CO2, the, the gas between the mash and the top, of, there's a layer of CO2 in there, which is very much the same as open fermentation. But uh, and above that, we'll have a filter system. This way you can breathe. It's almost like an open filter. We're not, we're not plugging the whole system up, but we are definitely ensuring that it is sterile and no bugs can get in there and nothing gets in there. So we have sterile environment. Seems important, yeah. <laughs> well, once again, you know, when you talk moonshine, you get this image of the guys in the backwoods. And I truly, truly, I read it just a couple days ago where a guy picked a possum out of his, a dead possum out of his mash and then cooked it. And I go, uh But yeah, no, dead raccoons. I mean, you you see all these guys have goombeckers that go into their uh, into their worm and then you, you know where they're getting them. Yeah. <laughs> Don't like that. I don't like that at all. <laughs> that raccoon. Yeah. So this the the backwood moonshine. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand the uh, the the lore. I understand the romanticism of it. No, I don't understand any of that. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's I'm sorry. I don't know. It is very hard work. It, you know, it's it, there is uh, the the. I don't know what to say. I'm not going to, the appreciation for someone to go through that, you know, to, to diligently break the law in order to do something. And as long as they're putting out a good product, all the world to them. But right. when your product is full of dead animals and gnats and flies and everything else, <laughs> I'd rather have something out of a distillery. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Uh, Mike is asking about your yeast strain, where it came from. And then, uh, he's asking, is it one of yours? Because you did mention that you're designing one, and I'd love to know more about how you go about designing a yeast strain. Yeah, I'm experimenting. That's 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 <laughs> next year's talk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll it's, share it's we'll share. Process. Yeah, we'll share the process of what we do. Um, once again, you know, the the yeasts are locked in vaults and everything else. Although, I mean, yeah, we're not we're not ever going to be the big guys, but. Yeah, we're going to have a unique flavor with our yeast, and it's going to be uh, prior. It's going to be ours. Okay. But, yeah, we will go through and we'll teach anybody how to do it and how to make their own. Oh, very cool. Is there is there – are you intending one yeast for all your fermentation, or do you think someday you're going to use different yeast for each one? Oh, no, it'll be, it'll be different yeast for each one because an all-grain mix – has different uh, uh, properties within do it as opposed to a sugar shine or a vodka. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even touched on rums. We know already that we need something specific for rum. Um, we don't plan on doing rum for another couple of years. And because we know what we have to do to get to that point. Um, when I first started, you know, uh, making many, many, many moons ago, um, I was about 13 in the backwoods. Yep. So in Cape Britain, now on the East Coast, there was only two things to do. One of them was make shine, and the other one was uh, what you used the shine for with the girls. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, essentially, it was a molasses shine. So, uh, and I grew up a, a rum drinker. Now, I do like a dry, crisp uh, a whiskey, scotch. Um, Lisa is the you surprise did. of the world. <laughs> uh, <did>. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Which she's awesome. she's going for the lagavulin and the, and the yard bags, bag. and, <laughs> and I'm going. Okay, this is kind of weird. I think uh, Erica would get along famously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's Erica right there. So when it comes to rum, though, 
I'm the opposite of everything else I drink. When it comes to rum, I want it to sit like an oil slick on my tongue. Mm. I want the uh, Juan Valdez to just sink in my mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so we're going to be drinking an environmental disaster coming to you from Silver Fox to Silver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a rum that you cannot refuse. All right, so my last rock gut for the night. Uh -huh. and I really don't know why I have these in my cabinet, but oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, this one here is it's it's not a moonshine, first time. Uh, <laughs> And I bought it as a joke, and Did it. You uh, mind it? Did you? Oh, I don't mind it actually. It's yeah. it's a it was a bit of a joke, and it it actually surprised the hell out of me. Oh, yeah. oh mellow corn! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> oh man, yeah. Uh, OG Brick is saying he put his life scene to rest this evening. R.I.P. Oh, well. So, so you gotta you gotta kill him sometime. <laughs> well, you know that just means that it's time to replace it with a new soldier that uh, can uh, endure as well. Exactly. Um, so we, I mean, we talked about a lot of plans you guys have for the future. It sounds like you guys are on a ton of stuff. Gin, you got the vodka, you got liqueurs, you got a bunch of small batch liqueurs coming out, which sounds pretty mm -hmm. cool. Right, and some of it is just gonna knock Se your socks seasonal. off. Seasonal, definitely. Uh, like our, uh, the rhubarb liqueur. Yeah, I've got <laughs> Freaking a rhubarb, awesome. I did a rhubarb one. It's oh, really? absolutely it's amazing. Um, and you know what, we, we've also tried the rhubarb with a gin, and it doesn't work as well. But mm -hmm. in a moonshine, it's out of the world. Mm -hmm. So if we, we have a vanilla, uh, we have the limoncello, um, uh, the coffee liqueur, mm -hmm. the cowboy candy, uh, which that I'm sure Brad's, <laughs> Brad's already talked about. Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like a spicy sweet one. Kind of. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then, so is the basis for those liqueurs, that's, is that your moonshine or your vodka? That's and, and you know what? There's there's the ideal point of, of be doing it the Canadian way by making all your grains separately. Our moonshine is a blend of all three, but our liqueurs are the individuals. So when we go to do our apple pie, we don't we don't want to do it with a corn shine. We want to do it with an oat shine. So now we have an you know the the apple crumble. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So <laughs> by having three different products that make up one of our main products, we can now just, you know, choose individual tastes. Or blend. Or blend. And it uh, it cuts down a lot of our workload. Oh, that's really, really cool. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I'm excited to try some of this stuff. This is really, really neat. You're um, only 10 hours away. I know, I know. We'll have to, I'm going to have to convince Erica Maybe mm -hmm. maybe this summer we'll make the drive up real quick as a little. Uh, yeah, uh, we should be in full swing. Though. Yeah, we'll have the uh, we'll get the uh, cash strength guys together and we'll have a party of it here. Uh, I would, I, would like that. Um, I did have one last train of thought I wanted to ask, um, just about starting the distillery itself. What is the paperwork like? And, oy, oy, oy. Yeah. And all the bureaucracy. Uh, yeah, we got caught in the bureaucracy bad. Um, it, it, you know, it's it's you know what the steps are. We had no real surprises. Um, you just it's it's progressional. So you have to hit here before you can do this. Yeah. You have to get there before you do this. So when we have our uh, when we had an issue with getting the boiler online and with the electrical inspector. Uh, that put us three months behind right there. We should have been open at the beginning of uh, December easily. Hoping, yeah. But, you know, we, we, and the problem is one of the steps that you get stopped at is you have to submit a sample oh. of what you need. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that when the boiler's not working. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, man. So that, yeah, that, that, yeah, so that, that costs, we, we got delayed by two months. But like I said, we should be done. We're, we're hoping for this weekend. Uh, we're, we still have our fingers crossed, but uh, yeah, yeah, it should be soon. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. That's good. That's good. Man. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot of put paperwork in, you get a certain part of it done. And then the next phase requires inputting paperwork that you already put in. <laughs> for, yeah. You need just, this number to apply for this one and yeah. then this one and then this one. And yeah. <laughs> Oh man, it's a, it's been a learning experience. Yeah. It's, but yeah, you have to come up this year because I'm not going to Oshkosh anymore. <laughs> oh, is that right? Okay. okay. I'll yeah, he's close to Oshkosh. He's close to Oshkosh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we will we will definitely definitely have to come up, me and Erica, uh, and see you guys and taste some of what you're making because I'm very excited to check it out. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And do you I think we might have some, some whiskey <laughs> in barrels by that time? Mm. Oh, we already do. Oh, you already do? Oh, perfect. I'm coming up now then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can't taste it for three years. Oh, no, right. we can't, you can't even taste it? You can't even take well, it? Well, yeah, well, yeah. We can pull a sample. Try it. Uh, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Where is it? <laughs> okay. Just close Yeah, it has to go in the barrel to for three years to officially be called a whiskey, but right. we have our preliminaries to go into the barrels and have an idea of kind of what the flavors are going to be like a little bit, but then we also have our environment and everything around us that's going to inflict its uh, say in the matter. <laughs> yeah, for, oh, for sure. For sure. Especially if it's... Is this the... Second? Yeah, so you heard me say that we did, and I don't know if you've watched any of the videos in the back there. Um, I need a new glass for this. I'm not putting that in with the other stuff. Uh, you've heard me uh, uh, talk about doing the uh, the Eagles Rare Mash Bill and the uh, anti Yeah. One yeah. of the things we wanted to do is, like I say, we want to know a, a bourbon whiskey style for a release three years down the road. But we we want to know what if the wood is going to make a proper effect onto it, mm -hmm. and you can tell that really quickly. Mm -hmm. So within a week, you're going to know from a sample whether or not that that is going to look really good in three years. And oh, look at that! There's about what forty? Four days. Four days. Four days. Four days. That's got some fun to it. Yeah. And uh, where's the other one? Uh, the other one actually is left in back. So this is this was the uh, the Eagle Rare version, and the the nose. Is it's actually really good. Almost <laughs> identical. No, no kidding. <laughs> no, yeah. you can taste the body. So we know we we hammered the mash bill right on. And I'm pretty close with our style of yeast, uh, the, the blend we used for this. So and the four days on the wood tells us that this will be a fantastic gram in three years. Nice. That is really cool. Man, that is awesome. I'm super excited yeah. to check that Bounce out. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah so all right well we are coming to the end of our stream thank you again so much for coming on this oh hey no we we have a blast with these you know it's a it was either do this or scrub out the mash ton <laughs> i've done enough of that last couple of days yeah, like i say all the fermenters are full so it's been it's been hopping pretty good yeah sounds like it yeah, sounds like you guys are moving fast, and that's good. I'm. I wish you all the success in the world. Uh, hopefully, you get that document by the weekend. I'm yeah, yeah, I that's all. Right. So, um, yeah, but everybody, this has been the Rock Up Review. Obviously, if you're not subscribed to Still in Canada, you should go do that and follow along yes. with the journey of Silver Fox Distillery. Um, and if you are in Ontario right now, keep an eye out for their products coming to an LCBO store near you um, and hopefully to the distillery very soon too. So, <laughs> yeah, um, no, you know what? We love seeing the people come up and visit. We've, the day we started, the, the day we got this building, we unlocked the door and it has been unlocked every we moment we're here. Open, yeah. <laughs> you want to walk in and chat? Yeah, we're we, happy to. We've been here at midnight and folks come over to the door and going, yeah, come on in. So they're, they're in going for a tour midnight. Yep. Nice. Open oh, door. Wow. Yeah. Well, you guys are so friendly. I'm sure a lot of people want to come and chat. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, I'm going to hit that end broadcast button. But before you guys leave, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time. Oh, I got to finish off with chicken cock as is tradition. So until next time, you guys. <laughs> stay. Salute. Hot.